So I'm back again, and today you'll notice I don't have a Nikon rangefinder with me. I have a roll of film with me. Actually, that's not true. I got one of my Nikon rangefinders right here. I always keep them within three feet of me, but uh, today's video is not about these. It's about these. So uh, this right here is a roll of film. There's a little bit of film left in it. It's actually pretty much empty, and uh, that's what I'm going to talk about today is how I load and uh, sort of bulk roll, I guess bulk load, I'm not sure what you call it. I roll my own film. I have these canisters right here. These are uh, canisters from Photo Warehouse's Ultrafine Extreme line. This is the 400 ASA film. I bought a big box that had 20 of these like five years ago. And um, I used all the film and I was pretty pleased with it. It seemed like it was a pretty good quality. It had a nice contrast. It was pretty easy to develop. Um, it generally seemed to expose well. Sometimes it came out a little on the dark side, but I think a lot of that was the camera I was using was an older Canon AE-1 program, and I, I don't think it was... Uh, I, I don't think I was using it quite correctly. I didn't really understand exactly how the metering worked. But I was pretty impressed with the results, so I, uh, I got this film and I decided to buy a bulk uh, roll of it, which is a 100-foot roll, and it comes in a box like this. This is obviously the 100 speed and not the 400 speed. They make it in 1 and 400 speed. I think they also make a, a different film that is a ortho that's probably like a 25 or 50 speed. I actually tried that one and was not very impressed with it, but these right here, the Ultrafine Extreme 1 and 400, I've had a lot of luck with. Uh, they're getting harder to find. I think they're actually going to discontinue this line and replace it with something else, and you, you can see there's some moisture on there from where I was keeping it in the fridge. But uh, this is a brand of film I've used quite a bit, and I really like it. And I was going to go over a little bit on how I bulk load this film. So I use one of these right here. This is a Watson bulk loader or roller. And it's a big plastic thing. It's, it's not really the best quality plastic, but it gets the job done. Um, these are empty right now, so I'm gonna open them up. So you would load the film in here, and you would kind of load your canisters in here, and you'd roll it through. I'll show in some detail how you do this. I'm not gonna do the whole process right now because I still have this, this fresh box I don't wanna open right now. I'm gonna keep that nice and cold and use up the film I have and probably start using that box in a couple of weeks. But uh, you'll see we have this big machine right here. I guess it's sort of a machine. You wouldn't really think of it as a machine, but uh, it does a job, so I guess it is. And what happens is you unscrew this little thing right here. It takes a little effort to get it off. It's got a pretty long threading. And you'll see there's basically just an empty space with sort of a, a little thing in the middle, a uh, rod. And what would happen is you'd open up this box. Uh, the film will be enclosed in sort of a foil type stuff and you of course put the film from there into here but you have to do it in the dark because obviously you can't expose your film so I usually go into a closet or something and close the door behind me and I take a jacket and kind of jam it under the uh, the door wedge so no light comes through and I fumble around with the stuff for a couple minutes until I'm pretty sure I've gotten it right and uh, it varies because I, I have another roll right here this is a Arista EDU 400 I've used the 400 and 100 in both 35 millimeter and 120. That's another film stock I like. It was very common a few years ago, but it's gotten a little bit rarer today. I like the fact that the bulk rolls come in these um, these kind of tin cases, like an old movie reel. I really like that look. I actually have one or two of those I saved and was putting something else in. But uh, these have a plastic spool thing in the middle, whereas I don't think, I think these are just a roll of film with nothing in the middle. Both of them come wrapped in sort of a foil type stuff, so you have to open that in the dark. You have to put it in here in the dark. You have to find the end of the film, which is, I think on most of them, it's actually kind of taped down to the roll, and you have to feed it through this gate right here. Um, and then, of course, you have to close this. You've got to line up this big, uh, this big spot right here and screw it into place. And what happens is before you open it, you'll want to go like that and pop it into place. You'll hear it kind of click. And that actually closes the film gate in here because it opens and closes. You can kind of see right there how it opens and closes and it's very important to remember that because when you're putting the spools in and loading them uh, if you have it open and you open it up like that you just expose some of your film and it's not going to destroy the entire roll but it will probably destroy uh, a certain amount of film I, I don't know exactly how much but probably a couple of feet of film will be lost so enough to make a roll maybe two so be careful about that. Make sure you're very religious about opening and closing this. Another thing to remember is when you're actually uh, spooling the film, this has to be wide open. It's very important to do that because it clicks into place. Uh, and when it clicks into place, it actually sort of, you'll see it has sort of a lock right there where it locks this top lid in place. And it's pretty important to remember that. 
because um, if you leave it sort of closed like that, it'll feed through, but it'll scratch up the film really bad. And even if you kind of open it and leave it half cocked, it'll still kind of scratch up the film. And you'll see I actually put some tape on there to kind of prevent that from happening because I made that mistake a few times when I started loading film. And I had a few rolls that were very scratched up, and it took me a while to figure out what the heck I was doing wrong. So that was a hard lesson learned, but I did learn a lesson there. So make sure you close the gate whenever you're... Um, loading and unloading canisters and whenever you're actually spooling them make sure you have it wide open and just to be safe especially with these Watson rollers it's probably not a bad idea to put a little bit of tape over that because it seems like these edges can be kind of rough um, so what I have right here this is the roll I was originally talking about so this is a, a this is um, the ultrafine uh, extreme 400 and when I got these the the ends just pop off very very easily uh, I don't know if the rolls still do this. Like I said, I bought these about five years ago, and I think they, they changed the style of film cassette, and I think they went with ones that are kind of permanently sealed. Uh, but these were great because it was very easy to pop it off with your bare hands, and you could uh, take this central piece out, and you could very easily um, work the film through. I'd, have, I'd put some tape on there. I'd put some kind of blue painter's tape. Uh, then I would work the canister back on, seal it up nice and good and you got to make sure they're sealed very good because it's very easy to uh, leave a gap and again that can expose the film or sometimes if you're not lucky the film can even fall out and then I would uh, put it in here and make sure it sit, sits in there properly is that the right way or is it the other way? I think that's about right and you have to start cranking and you can see kind of brings it in and out when you uh, turn that little knob if you get the film lined up correctly uh, the little holes right there will connect with those little uh, notches on this bar and when you turn it it'll make sort of a clicking sound and it'll click off every time you advance a frame so if you do that you can actually count out a roll you can do a 24 shot roll or you can do a 36 shot roll I usually go with 36 shot rolls I just think it's a little bit easier for developing it saves you a little bit in the long run on developer so I prefer that um, I know a lot of people will go with something like a 27 shot roll that's a little bit longer than 24 but not super long and I, I think if you're testing cameras that might be a good option and I know specifically for testing some people will do like 10 or 12 shot rolls and just test out a few shutter speeds and develop it uh, so they don't waste a whole lot of film on a camera that's potentially damaged. I think that's a pretty wise move but I, I, I've never really done that myself. I think I, I, I tried it once or twice and then I, I, I didn't develop the film correctly so it ended up being kind of fruitless. But um, that's essentially a brief tutorial of how I load my film. A lot of people might say, well, this seems kind of tedious. You've got to buy this big thing right here. These run uh, around $20, $25. I think I've seen them sell for $50 new, but I, you can find a lot of them used for around the $20, $25 range. Um, and then you obviously have to buy a big spool of film. You usually find 100-foot rolls, and it varies a lot. Some of the cheap films can be around $40. If you go with something Kodak, it's going to be like $100. And when I say $100, I mean probably more like $120, given modern-day prices for Kodak. But um, if you figure it out, uh, these rolls are pretty cheap. Like, I, I calculated it, and I didn't write it down, so I don't remember exactly. But with this uh, Ultrafine Extreme, uh, I get about 19 or 20 rolls out of one of these 100-foot rolls in a Watson roller. And that comes out to about $2. I want to say it was it was about $2.40 a roll, but that doesn't account for shipping and handling. So it probably comes up to about $250 a roll because uh, the shipping is about $10 on one of these orders. Because uh, I just ordered this, so I do remember the shipping and handling. <laughs> and um, I think that's pretty reasonable because if you buy the pre-rolled rolls of film, they're usually at least $5 a roll. And uh, Ultrafine is one of the cheaper film brands out there. So I think that's pretty good that you can cut your film costs almost in half just by self-rolling. Similar with the Arista EDU, this, um, this film stock costs about as much as Ultrafine. It does vary a little bit, but they're pretty similar. If you buy one of their pre-rolled uh, canisters, it's again somewhere around 5 or $6. Sometimes you can find them a little bit cheaper, but it, it, when you roll it with uh, the bulk loader, it's only about, uh, I think it was about 260 or 270 uh, per roll, which is quite a bit of savings in the long run. You have to think... Um, for for a brief period of time, if you only want to buy one roll and shoot it, obviously it's not worth it. But if you do it like me and you get these canisters that are recycled, which is hard to do, you'll probably have to buy your own canisters. And it costs about $25 for an order of five or ten of them, depending on where you go from and what kind you go with. 
The metal ones cost more. There are plastic ones that are quite a bit cheaper. They're not DX coated, but I don't always put the right film in here and I don't really use a DX coated camera, so it doesn't matter to me, but to some people that might be an issue. But um, Photo Warehouse does sell DX canisters and they do sell, I know, uh, 400 and 100 speed ones. I don't know if they go beyond that, but they, they, you can get the proper DX coating if you're willing to buy it. Theirs aren't the cheapest, but they, they do seem to be very good. So I would suggest their, both their film and their canisters. Uh, like I said, these uh, bulk loaders can be had pretty cheap, but it, it kind of varies. You might not be able to find one just laying around somewhere, but they're not that rare, so it's not that hard to find one. Um, the canisters are probably going to be the hardest thing to find, I'll be honest, and those uh, can be tricky. Um, I, I would, again, suggest the ones from uh, Photo Warehouse. I don't know too many other people make them. I know you can get plastic ones from China that are really cheap, but I'm not sure I would really trust the quality on those because I've seen them and they don't seem great uh, but that is something I would suggest they do sell a big box that has about 20 rolls of film I think you can get a sample box that has like uh, about three rolls of the 100 speed and three rolls of the 400 speed and I, I'm not sure if they still have these canisters that are easy to pop open but it's probably worth just trying out their film just to see what it's like and if you can save the canisters and reuse them if not they do sell canisters that are empty and reloadable and I would strongly suggest doing that and uh, starting to bulk load your own film because in the long run you can save a lot of money like you can if you shoot about six rolls of film you'll essentially cut your costs in half and that does that does obviously include kind of buying one of these bulk loaders and some of these cassettes or recycling them but that's a lot of savings film is not cheap so anything you can do to sort of cut corners and save on costs is always going to help you out so that's why I am very religious about bulk loading my film um, I don't know if this is the most informed video. It's a little different from what I normally do, but hopefully this uh, kind of helps inform somebody and lets you realize that bulk loading film is very affordable and it's, it's not really that hard. All you really need to worry about is getting one of these loaders and a bunch of these cassettes. Uh, that's the hardest part. The process of actually loading them, as I showed you, it's very easy. I didn't even really go into any details, but you should probably be able to figure it out on your own. Uh, and then you can develop it at home. That's the thing I do. Saves you a little bit more money. I think sometimes the home development, the, uh, the quality can be a little bit lower than what you might get at a lab, but you're saving so much money that again, I really think it justifies the cost. Um, it does take a little extra time, but to me that's part of the charm of it, is that extra time and effort. It's like I'm, I'm involved in pretty much every step of the process. I load the canisters. I, uh, I shoot the canisters, I develop the film that was in the canisters, and then I scan it. That's all, all things I did, and to me there's a certain charm to that, that it's, it's something I did pretty much every aspect of it. Granted, I didn't make the film or the camera, but you know, you, you can't do everything. So that's about as detailed as you can get with this process. Uh, hopefully this informs some people and kind of inspires you to go out and try bulk loading your own film. Again, I would strongly suggest it. You can save a lot of money. Um, you will probably have some mishaps along the way, I'll be honest. At some point you're probably going to expose some film, you're going to ruin a canister or two. If you're really unlucky, you might ruin an entire roll. But if you start off with some of the stuff like the Arista and the Ultrafine, it's very cheap. Uh, I think I think both of these were a little under $50 a roll. This one was like 40, low 40s, and I think this one was kind of mid 40s. So all that shipping and handling, I only paid about $100 to have both of these um, rolls of film purchased and shipped to me. And again, the shipping and handling was about $10 or so. And I think that's a pretty good deal because, as I said, if you buy a roll of Kodak, like uh, Kodak Tri-X, the roll of film by itself, a 100-foot roll, will cost well over $100. I think it's about $125 in the modern market. I, I could be overestimating that a little bit, but, uh, you know, by the time I publish this video, it could be on the low side because Kodak is always raising their prices. I don't know why they feel the need to do that. It seems like they're kind of killing their own business, but that's a video for another day. So hope you enjoyed this and hopefully this inspires somebody to go out and kind of uh, bulk load their own film.